Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznos here, and this video is going to focus on something that I see so much in my comments. Many of you will watch my videos, maybe you'll see kills that I get, or see me doing higher level bosses, or see some of my friends fast kills, and see that you don't match up, or know that you struggle with these certain bosses, and basically think to yourself, wow, I think I just suck at PVM. Many, many of you have said this in my comments, that you think you just suck at PVM, and you don't know why. I don't know how many times I've gotten this comment, but the comments you're seeing on screen now are a bunch of different ones that I've received over the past months of making videos. A lot of this is people just beating themselves up or thinking that they aren't good enough at PVM, but in reality, you might just be doing a few very simple things wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna go through some of the common mistakes you might be making or things that might be holding you back when it comes to getting better at PVM. Uh, usually, it's a lot more simple than you think and it's not that you just suck, it's that you might just be doing a few things wrong. So if you enjoy videos like like this and want to get better at PVM, make sure to subscribe for more content like this and let's get into the video. So the first thing that you could be doing wrong is really, really simple when you think about it. It does of course get more complex the more you look into it, but it is using the wrong abilities. Now this even applies to Revolution and Revolution++ Plus Plus users. So if you use Revolution, don't think this doesn't apply to you because it definitely does. You can still have the wrong abilities being prioritized on your bar. You don't know how often I get sent either ability bars or I see people using ability setups that are going to make their life so hard for them. This doesn't mean that you have to go and use the best abilities every single time and be absolutely perfect, but a lot of times switching out a few things can really, really help you. For instance, something like Rack is just a pretty universally horrible ability. Um, if your opponent isn't stunned, this ability is not very good at all, and you'll be surprised how many people I see just use this as a normal ability without their opponent being stunned. It actually is one of the lowest ranking basic abilities. Right now, you're looking at a spreadsheet from the PVME Discord, which of course has great resources. I link them all the time, and I'll link them below and in the description. And this spreadsheet basically shows you the priority order of abilities for each style, what scenarios to use them in and stuff like that. So for instance, if you're looking for what basics to use and what thresholds to use while under sunshine uh, with the magic style, you can see the number one threshold and number one priority should be wild magic. Then after this we have asphyxiate. You can also see this for basic abilities so you can kind of know what abilities are really bad and what are you know better that you should prioritize. That doesn't mean that you have to use all these in perfect order every time and be absolutely perfect, but this is an amazing baseline to see just where the mistakes are that you might be making. So this should allow you to really see if you're making a mistake here with your abilities, or if you're using them right, then your mistake might be somewhere else. There's a ton of great info on this spreadsheet about basically every ability, and I'm not saying that you need to go study this spreadsheet like it's a final exam you're about to take, but just maybe familiarize yourself loosely with the priorities for the style you're using with basics and thresholds. I know I was super guilty of this. I like playing games and kind of learning for myself, and I'm very stubborn sometimes, but in reality, there's so much great information out there that can really help you out and kind of help you find where you're struggling in general. So if you're struggling with damage output, it might not be your gear or your skill level at all. It might just be as simple as putting the wrong abilities on your revolution bar. Now something super, super helpful for someone that uses revolution a lot, there is a very handy tool made by Mickey that I've used pretty often before and it allows you to basically craft a revolution bar and then you can look at the average ability damage per tick for your revolution bars. This is really handy to kind of play around with even if you don't completely understand the numbers. This makes it so you can just change around your current bar, see if it gets better or worse, and allows you to kind of experiment if you're having trouble doing that in game because I know sometimes we don't really have an amazing tool to kind of track how we're doing. I guess we can go to a boss and try two different revolution bars and then see which one does better and then repeat that with more and more bars, but this kind of makes it easy and using this tool and the ability spreadsheet as mentioned earlier can give you a really great foundation just to get your damage looking much better. While this isn't going to increase your skill in terms of like how fast you can click, how many you know abilities you can click per minute, it will eliminate the use of bad abilities and give you a really big advantage 
advantage, so this is probably one of the most common reasons why people are convinced they suck, why their damage is too low, when in reality they might just be using the wrong abilities. So one of the other reasons you might be struggling might not be because of your ability to actually DPS at all, but more the fact that you're not giving yourself a chance to deal as much damage as you should, and let me explain that. For instance, when I first really got into RuneScape 3 PVM, I had the mindset of, I did not want to die, and a lot of people have this mindset, and I thought the best way to go about it, to not die, was, well, to eat and keep my HP super, super high. So for instance, if I was at a boss like a Raxor, I was so scared of the swipe and other mechanics, if I got hit down from like 10k health to like 7k, I'd immediately eat and top off my health to 10k, just so I was super safe and didn't have any chance of dying. Or I'd spam drink my bruise. Now not only is this not needed, it's really hampering my DPS output, and it's making me feel safe, but in reality, it made me die even more than I would have if I hadn't done that. The reason was I was losing adrenaline by eating, I wasn't using blubbers or anything like that, so I would lose adrenaline, I was wasting time, and I was focusing so much on eating that my damage really, really lacked. Now, it will feel scary at first, but something that helped me was if you go into practice mode. So if you go into practice mode at a boss, you can't get any loot but you don't lose anything if you die. So when I went into practice mode basically I would see how long I could possibly go without eating. Usually I would end up making it pretty far before I felt like I had to eat and I would end up actually doing more damage than I had before or kill the boss way way faster. Of course it was practice mode so I had no risk involved but it really allowed me to practice learning how to only heal when I truly needed to. Here's a great example of how being scared or nervous to die in PVM can make you eat way more and just hamper your kills in general. So at a place like Araxi and Arch Glacier, I become super comfortable, but when I tried to do a new boss like Solok, it was a real struggle and I was very scared to die. But when I finally decided to try to switch to a Ripper Demon at Solok, it was of course a big struggle at first, but it really forced me to eat as little pos as possible because I didn't really have that much food. I had a Ripper Demon, I barely had any food so I had to soul split to heal, I had to use things like resonance more often to stay alive, and it really was a huge part in my progression there, as in some of the early clips when I first started using a Ripper Demon, I was very very bad and I did die a lot, but all this helped me in the long run. So if you feel like you don't deal enough damage at a boss but your abilities are fine or you're struggling on kills, go into practice mode and try to go absolutely as long as you can without eating and after doing this maybe 10 or 20 times it's really gonna help you a lot with your damage output and just generally getting better at pvm so something else you can do to improve at pvm that some people kind of skip through is trying to actually understand the mechanics of the boss. I've talked about this before, but a lot of people kind of brute force things. So some good starter bosses to do to kind of, you know, learn mechanics rather than just DPSing. Something like the Magister, God Wars 1, uh, it's basically just DPSing and not dealing with anything. So if you want to actually learn, you know, how to adapt, how to deal with certain mechanics and understand bosses, uh, you can start with something, of course, like Arch Glacier, even normal mode Arch Glacier. You can toggle on and off the mechanics that you want to do. You can learn prayer flicking. You can learn defensives. You can learn how to move around. Um, Arch Glacier is very, very good uh, for learning. Even in normal mode, you don't, it doesn't pose too much of a threat but you still have to learn and deal with the mechanics and it's very good to practice. Something like the giant mole actually has quite a few mechanics that you have to deal with. Now while they're not you know super deadly it is something that's nice for learning different mechanics. A lot of people don't like giant mole including myself. I don't enjoy killing it that much but from a learning perspective it can be very very useful. So giant mole is another one. QBD also is a very good boss to learn just because although it's 
old and although you should be able to kill it pretty fast it does have some unique mechanics that can really help you you know in your, the grand scheme of learning how to pvm and deal with these so something else that can really help you is maybe you're just not as willing to learn as you think and hey i fall into this category so much sometimes so four tick auto attacking is something you can do with magic and it's something that i probably could learn but i just haven't done it yet i just haven't felt really uh the need to do it that's the same for a lot of people with learning something like full manual or even learning a harder boss so my dad is a professor and he used to always say that going to school isn't really about you know preparing you for a job it's more about showing uh, the employers that you know how to learn and knowing how to learn is super important for pvm as well uh, the willingness to be able to learn um, to be able to basically push yourself to try to do harder things and not just be like oh i failed so now i'm just gonna go back to what i was doing obviously i'm not good enough i suck i can't do this so being willing to learn and try new things is very very important to pvm now if you're someone who has looked at these things and said i'm using the exact right abilities i am using them in the correct order i'm using the right priorities i'm not eating all the time i'm generally pretty much doing things i feel are right but i still am not doing great at pvm well there's a few other reasons uh, why you might be struggling so um the last thing that it could possibly be is something wrong with you know your gear or your core uh, foundation of abilities, prayers, things like that. So there's a lot that goes into PVM. We all know this. There's so many moving parts. That's why it makes, you know, a new player getting into PVM in RuneScape 3 is quite the task. So I won't go through everything in this video because I've said a lot of them before and I don't just want to repeat it here, but I'll leave decent links in the description uh, as well. But things like invention, archaeology, herb lore, summoning, prayer, are all extremely extremely important to pvm having the right perks on your armor and weapons uh, it's 2022 invention has been out for a long time now and having those right perks uh, on both your gear sets is very 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 important more important than you might think so important that i believe an unperked weapon versus just basic perks is like a four to five percent dps increase if not more just the basic perks so if you're not you know if you don't have archaeology relics that you should be using if you don't have um, the right invention perks or any invention perks at all uh, if you're not using you know curses of course that's a big one that most people are using by now uh, if you don't have you know even adrenaline potions overloads uh, things like you know the planted feet perk can make a huge difference there's so many things I'll link my pvm guide that's like a compilation of a ton of different pvm resources like auras uh, skills, different perks, uh, the optimal perks, beginner perks, uh, tons of different things. I'll leave a link to that in the, in the description. But if you do most of these things right and you're still struggling, uh, it could be something, you know, in your gear or your setup or something like that. But I find more than likely it isn't really the gear that is uh, causing people to struggle. It's more, you know, knowing the fundamentals of abilities, um, and things like that. Uh, it's not super about how many, you know, how good you are, how fast you are, how many abilities you can click, you know, per minute or anything like that. It's more about using the right ones. You don't have to be super speedy. You can basically do every boss in this game uh, with Revolution++. Plus Plus. Now, I use Full Manual. I'm a proponent for Full Manual. I think it makes the game more fun, and I think it really uh, will help you. It definitely does help increase your damage and how you can basically control everything but i do recognize that a lot of people have been doing super high level pvm with revolution for a very long time so that's not something that you have to do so like i said it's not all about just you know being the fastest using full manual clicking all the abilities uh, super fast it's more about knowing exactly what to use even if you're using revolution knowing how to set up your bar right uh, in what scenarios you do want to you know manually input things uh, because it is really hard to never manually input something you know a revolution bar can only do so much you will have to do a little bit but all in all these are the main problems and issues i see a lot of people facing so i hope this 
help you guys out. I uh, really found the ability, um, you know, spreadsheet and the uh, revolution bar maker super, super helpful. And I think it will help a ton of people out here. So you can check the description for that. Make sure to go to the PVME wiki because they have so many other great resources. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like because it gets a video out to more people. Uh, maybe share it with your friends if you know somebody that's struggling or trying to get better. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.